I welcome you to the Surefire Live Conference platform, the platform the Almighty God has given to us to teach the Word of God. Primarily, make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. I make bold to say, there is no other way. There is no other way to gain eternal life except through Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the way. He is the truth. But it doesn't stop there. He is also the life. That's why he is unique. He gives eternal life. God gives us eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. So our text for this topic, Abiding in Christ, Abiding in Christ, is from John chapter 15, verse 5. So let's take our text together, John chapter five, uh, 15, verse 5. John chapter 15, verse 5. I read it. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's set the context of this study. So we will attach the necessary importance that we need to attach to this study. This year, 2021, the Spirit of God has given us specific word to the body of Christ and all who cares to listen. That the key to preservation, protection, safety, and above all, salvation is to abide in Christ. This year, abide in Christ. And of course, you abide in Christ, you're not going to end this year. You continue to abide because eternal life is the greatest need of man. And only in Christ do you have eternal life. And all the other blessings that we have just enumerated, preservation, protection, safety. This is very important now and will remain relevant for the rest of our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. And so... We're going to read, take our Bible reading, and then we will have discussion. We're going to read that whole John chapter 15, even though we've taken a text. John chapter 15 has 27 verses, and I'm going to appoint three people to read those three verses. So Joy will read from verse 1 to 9, 27 verses, and a blessing. Elena, blessing will read from verse 10 to 18. I would ask Brother Lucky to read verses 19 to 27 very quickly. And every one of us, let's open our Bibles to read. Now, while they are reading, please pay attention to the key question we're going to be discussing before they start reading. I have taught us that when you want to study something, I create a framing process that enables you to structure your thoughts and look deep into what you want to study. So use the process I call what, why, how. What, why, how. It's simple to follow, isn't it? You can always use this structure. What? What is it about? What is the meaning? You go as deep as possible in that space. Why is this important? Why is it important? And then how do I implement what this thing is about? How do I practice it? So that's what we're going to adopt. We are going to start today focusing on the what. So what does it mean to abide in Christ? We will also try to explain the different uh, uh, verses, that relevant verses, key verses that strikes you, that strikes me, that speaks to you as we read the entire of John chapter 15 today. That's what we're going to focus on. What does it mean to abide in Christ? What does it mean to abide in Christ? We're also going to look at uh, some Bible um, uh, scriptures, other scriptures that refers to abiding in Christ that will help us understand the meaning of abiding in Christ, clearly. I will ask other questions as we go. So let's start the reading very quickly. Joy, over to you. 
John chapter 15, verses 1 to 9. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruits, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruits, he prunes, that it may bear more fruits. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruits of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruits, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gathered them and, th and, they gathered them and threw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruits, so you will be my disciples. As the father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Mr. Blessing, Elia, from 10. From the message translation, if you keep my comments, you remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done, kept my father's commands and made myself at home in his love. I have told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy, and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I love you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things, when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I have named you friends because I have let you I have let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. You don't choose me, rather I chose you. You didn't choose me, rather I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me, he gives you. But remember the root command, love one another. If you find the godless word is hating you, remember if God is that hating me. 19 to the end. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If, if ye were of the world, the world will love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I have remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. For they have kept my saying. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hated me, Eated my father also. For I had not done among them the works which none other man did. They had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the world might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. 27, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Thank you very much for that excellent uh, reading, the three of you. Okay, now discussion. We want to discuss. Remember, what do we want to discuss? What? Does it mean to abide in Christ? And we also say, make reference to other scriptures that further clarify the meaning of abiding in Christ. We're focusing or are relevant to understanding the subject of abiding in Christ or to abide in Christ. So let me start with asking Brother Dara to speak or give us what your take is. What does it mean to abide in Christ? Share with us, Brother Dara. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, beautiful to be here. Okay, so uh, on the topic, so as I opened that scripture and I read through, there were a few things that jumped out for me uh, regarding what it means to abide in Christ. And so I'll just go through 
those bits and then um, share my own um, understanding on, on what it is. So I typically would like to define a few things. So as I read through that scripture, I used the NIV translation, John 15, verse 5. And it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That ended with quite an instruction. You can do nothing. So a um, few things, like I said, jumped out for me. The fact that uh, God is divine, and then we are the branches, and then um, we won't be able to bear fruit until we, we abide in him. And then the, the first thing that also stood out for me there is, apart from me, you can do nothing. So as always, the Bible is always clear about um, um, a, a lot of things, and this was a, an exception. So abide, to abide, what does it mean to abide? Uh, the definition that I, the working definition that I picked up is the fact that to abide means to remain, to act in accordance with a recommendation, to um, a recommendation, a rule, or a decision, something that someone had maybe told or instructed you to do. You know. So for me, basically, uh, what I can understand from that scripture, there are a few things. Number one, Jesus is the vine. Is our source, is, is the one who nourishes us, is the one who supplies us, is the one who gives us direction, is the one who gives us grace. And um, it's also, it also makes abundant life possible, just like you said in John 10, and I come to uh, give you life and give you life more abundantly. So, um, and we are the branch, an extension of, of Him. So, to abide in Christ, to abide in God, to abide in Him. And that instruction says, for me, it would mean to remain connected, abiding, to remain connected. So um, how do we stay connected? We can stay connected to the instructions that they are given. So abide in Christ would mean following the instructions that Christ has, has stated. If you go by that definition, that abiding means to um, act in accordance with a recommendation. So Christ has recommended that we love. So abide, for me, in that context, we mean love because it's an instruction, um, a recommendation that we give. So, um, so that's, it. That's, that's it for me. Abiding in Christ will mean Thank to you. behave in a manner uh, that Christ has instructed, either by our daily living or by how we relate with the world, so that in doing so, we become sufficiently capable to express the life that he has given up for us. Thank that's, you. That's it. Thank you. And uh, thanks. Uh, you did a good job there. At first, you had said uh, God is the vine. And then you came back to clarify that Jesus is the vine. So that's uh, very, very good. Jesus is the vine. Because verse 1 has said, Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser in this context. Jesus is the vine that we're talking about. Okay. Thank you, Brother Dara, for that contribution. I will call Brother Sonny to make his contribution. After that, we will just open and then we will all make contribution. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Pastor. Yes. Uh, I want to go straight to John chapter 15, verse 5, which happened to be our text for this discussion. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. The word abide is an important word. And uh, like what the brother that I've just said, it has a lot of meanings. To abide could mean to stay connected. It could also mean to remain. It could also mean to surrender all. So there are a lot of meanings that could be attached to that word abide. But let us go to the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse, 15, uh, verse 5 to verse 6. And I want to read from there. 
Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. And the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Uh, this come up to let us know that uh, to abide in Christ means to trust in him wholeheartedly. As you can see in that Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 5 to 6. To abide in Christ can also mean to surrender all to him. That way we can see in Psalms 55, verse 22, where the Bible says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. This also clearly defines and explains to us what it means to abide in Christ. In John chapter 14, verse 15, the Bible says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. That is another definition or another explanation for abide. If we are to abide in Christ, we have to keep his commandments. If we are to abide in him, we have to do what he asks us to do. So to abide in Christ means to be obedient to his word and to keep his commandments. In Colossians 3, for 16, the Apostle Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. That is abiding in God or in abiding in Christ. See the same thing. If we abide in Christ, the word of God will dwell in us. If we have the word of God in us, if his word abides in us or dwells in us richly, we are going to make a lot of exploits. So in order for us to succeed or be fruitful, we have to let the word of God to abide in us. So finally, I want to conclude by saying that uh, we are called as part of the abiding process to submit to the pruning knife of God in the providences by which he cuts away all disloyalty and sometimes all that is not fruitful in our life in order that we might remain in Christ all the more wholeheartedly. So that is my understanding of what this teaching is all about. Thank you very much, Pastor, for the time. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, good points. Yeah, again, um, re-emphasizing the point that Dara has made as well. So there is consistency there and reference. Um, so um, to remain, to uh, follow the instruction or command, and to surrender. Those are the key hitters. And then uh, you talk about trusting God absolutely. Uh, and then went further to give us that, uh, that we are called to the pruning knife of God. I put it by which he cuts off all forms of disloyalty and the rest of them. Thank you for that. Okay, let's hear other contributions. Abiding in Christ. What does it mean? Is there anybody else who wants to add? There's no point in repeating what they have already said. Is there something else you want to add? Is there another angle you want to look at this? What does it mean to abide in Christ? Or are there other scriptures that you want to? Okay, so uh, Sister Gertrude first and then Sister Comfort. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Pastor. Uh, what I want to add to what they have said, they've said so much. I want to add 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. It says, those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. So the fact abiding in Christ me, uh, means living in the Lord and Christ living in us. 
and that is through his word, obeying his words. So I just wanted to add that best to what they have said. They have said so much about that. Thank you. Thank you. And indeed, if you use the King James or the New King James Version, that scripture you refer to, use the exact word abide. It says, now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. So I think one key word you have brought out is living. Another word for abiding is living in Christ and Christ living in us. Thank you so much for that contribution. Sister Comfort. <laughs> uh, thank you, Pastor. Yes. You know, I, I am not really going to say much, but to say that, um, like you have said, that there is always consistency. That unity when you read the scriptures. In fact, I, 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 I the paper I'm holding is when I started to do deeper research into the scripture. So the question I asked was, what are we preaching to people? What do I want from people? So when I started asking this question, understanding what I am supposed to do, not what people want me to do. Mm -hmm. That was when the light of the truth keeps on coming to me. So, and that uh, John of 15, seven, I always like uh, the seven of it. Mm -hmm. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So this question of asking and understanding helped me to understand my relationship with Christ. The, how important this is. Like what the scripture uh, brought Sonny read at Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. is: If I depend on God, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me will make your path straight. So that confirms here. Abide in Christ. When we abide in him and allow his word to abide in us, we will be connected. Connected. In fact, if I could read the prayer after I had read those scripture, then I it's so deep that I say, is it me who prayed this prayer? Please, so, if, you, if it's uh, short enough, please read it and bless us with it. I, 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 and I, in fact, there's, I start by saying that uh, I was praying to somebody. I say, you are free and healed of everything that holds you captive and pull you down in Jesus' name. You are not alone. God is there with you. Jesus Christ is there with you. Holy Spirit is there with you. Heaven will come and fight your battle until victory is won in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, and it is prayer I, for somebody. Yeah. You say? I say amen. It is prayer for somebody. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. We, so, we receive it in Jesus' name. It was a deep prayer of understanding what it means to abide in Christ. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So I am asking that the Holy Spirit will continue to teach us. Yes. And we will become transformed to the nature of Christ. Our journey, our journey is not going to be hindered. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for that contribution. Is there anybody else who wants to say something uh, before I will summarize? Okay, Brother Lucky, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The entire, the entire discussion or the entire passage reminds me of Psalm 1. It takes my mind to Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. 
that says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinner, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the word of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit, forth is fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he doeth shall prosper. Here is telling us that our ability to survive in this war is dependent on how much we abide in our relationship with God. And also our ability to do exploits in the world on behalf of the kingdom is also dependent on how much we abide with Christ. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. That was very sharp to the point. Any other contribution? It is Bible study, so it's not pastor preaching. It is all of us searching the scripture, bringing out the truth, and the Holy Spirit always guides us. Okay, now, there are not a few things I want to um, emphasize. First, run through um, the passage. John chapter 15. I want us to look at verse 3. I want us to look at verse 3. I want to clarify this because sometimes it is uh, misconstrued. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. So the clean here is means um, to have understanding and being shaped and modeled by the word of Christ through believing, through believing. So it was saying, to his disciples that they already have believed the word and the word has shaped their life. The word has conditioned um, their heart, modeled them. Uh, you would see this same word used in John chapter 13, verse 10. John 13, verse 10. Uh, uh, 13 and 11. He said, Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. You see, is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you, okay? So you could see here two clean being used, clean of the outer body. And then Jesus saying, you are complete, you are clean, but not all of you. Look at verse 11. He said, for he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. So there was somebody that was not clean. Who was that? Judas, we know, because he did not believe the word that Jesus was speaking. And therefore, Jesus said, not all were clean. He wasn't clean. Uh, he was not modeled and shaped by the teaching of Jesus Christ. That's what the clean there means. He was not modeled, changed, and shaped by the teaching of Jesus because he didn't believe. That's what the, I mean, the claim that means. I want to also look at uh, something from a question because one of that bring all this home, all that we have said into something that we're gonna really focus on. And one beautiful thing about the scripture is that the scripture has all the answers, yeah? Answers, the Bible provide, always provides its own answers and it is complete. So whatever question or questions we may have, the scripture has the answers. You remember 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction in righteousness, 17 says that the man of God, the woman of God, the children of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So uh, where I'm going to is, so when people start looking elsewhere and getting confused for answers in life, it is because they don't know the Bible has all the answers. And of course, sometimes they are unwilling to look into the Bible. Uh, some raise questions, raise doubts about the Bible, about the uh, scripture, but the scripture has complete answer. So the question we are asking, what does it mean to abide in Christ? 
is contained in the same passage that we are reading. That's really where I'm going. Let's, in the context that Jesus was talking about here, let's look at, uh, let me ask a little more question to here. I want us to kind of give a pictorial, a pictorial representation of abiding or to abide. If you were to give a pictorial, a, a, a descriptive uh, word or a prescriptive analogy of abiding, abiding in Christ or abiding with somebody, abiding as is used here, what would be that picture, that one imagery that you will use? Can somebody give me a picture of abiding? How do we, what, what? In what way can one abide with somebody? Yes, please go ahead. Yes. yes. The first thing that comes to my mind is um, the person is living with that person. God bless you. The person is living with that person. So they're living in the same house, right? Living in the house, living together. And now I go into the second question then. Who are the people who live? together who are the people who will live in your house give me people who will live in your house who are they please let's enumerate them let's enumerate them who are the people who will live in the in the house who will come into your house um abide with you yes sister Gertrude. those who live in my house are my immediate family my husband and my husband. daughter so, so daughter spirit, represents child, yes, daughter. And then some relations. Your son, okay, relation are brothers and sisters, right? Yes. Okay, who else? So in the spirit realm. Yes, brother, lucky. Sorry, why? Okay. Just a second. Let, look, let's hear Lucky, then you come. Okay. Brother, brother Lucky, yes? Yeah, I, I want to look at people who are willing to adhere to a common rules and regulations. Yes, yeah, so what would you call them? People who are yeah, People who have a common vision, people who have a common vision, people who have a common goal that are willing to abide to particular rules and regulation. We are not willing to deviate to a particular norm. Okay, but- We must uh, adhere to that, that norm. Okay, but does that define abiding with you? Do they abide with you there or they abide with regulation? I think that will be abiding with regulation, isn't it? Rather than abiding um, with but, you. But the, the, owner, the owner of the constituency defines the rule and regulations, which you okay, must abide good. with. So who are the people that are in the constituency first? That's what we're looking at. Okay, okay, okay. Exactly. They've got to be in the constituency. So who are the people? And yeah. the constituency here is your house, right? Is your home. Yes. Is that space? Who are the people who abide in your house? So so uh, now back to you, Gertrude. Sister Gertrude. Thank you, Brother Lucky, for that. No, I was saying that in the spiritual realm, those who abide with me are those who are in the family of God. They've come to know the Lord okay. or God through Jesus Christ. That was what I wanted to add okay. to that. All right, thank you. I think you've given us a good list. It's probably covered all. The only thing I want to add to this list is servants. Uh, servants, right? Isn't it? Okay, and now let's go back to the scripture. And... You see, I was actually, when I was um, thinking about this, I prayed that the spirit will put these words in your mouth. And indeed, many of you just hit the words. Ultimately, this study of abiding in Christ, Sister Comfort said it, and uh, Brother Lucky also said it, is about relationship with Christ, uh, Brother uh, Son is also quoted that scripture talking about it. And I think everybody has been speaking along that line. 
So get through all the contribution. So abiding in Christ, ultimately, when you lift it above just texts, are you there with me? And understand that this was about Jesus Christ and his disciples. So it's about human beings. Can you see that? Then you lift it to relationship. So it is about relationship. How we relate with Christ. How do you relate with Christ? And now, as we have already defined, so there are different degrees of relationship, isn't it? If I ask, what are the different degrees or level of relationship? That defines also the different degrees and level of abiding in Christ. And this is what we're going to be studying in the next follow-up study of abiding in Christ. As we have come to understand now that ultimately this message Christ was talking about his disciples is about a relationship with him, their relationship with him. And so we're going to go, the next step is what are the different degrees, different levels of relationship with Christ and how do they differ? And these different levels, we've already enumerated them, right? So let's look at verse 15, verse 15. Verse 15, can you see the relationship there? He said, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You can immediately pick three or four relationships from this. One, there is father, and once there is father, that means there has to be a son, right? Or a daughter, there has to be father-children relationship. Two, you sin, master. And once there is master, that means there has to be servant. And we have talked about the other ones, uh, spouse, husband, wife. Which level of relationship are you? in Christ. Let's make this point that how much you know a person depends on your level of relationship or abidance with that person. How much you know a person. Some people at times will call people my friend, my friend, my friend, but only one day of staying together, abiding together, friendship scatters. In fact, there is a story I was listening to on the radio the other day about two celebrities. They have been dating for three years, three good years. And they decided to get married within one week to two weeks of marrying, they scattered. What happened? Because now they are abiding together. They move from the level of relationship of friends, external. And I'm not, I'm talking about not close friend this time. I'm not talking about, I went into the level of deeper relationship. And then they got to know themselves more. Or oh, how many times are people say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I will die for you. But once they abide together, they know themselves much more deeper. This is what Jesus Christ is calling us to come and abide in him and know him deeper. As one of our brothers uh, or one of the speakers, I may not remember who said it directly, I think, brother, everybody emphasized it. The outcome of this relationship, brother, I said it, brother, Sonny, our sisters, everybody mentioned that. Is it is what determines the fullness of Christ that is in us. So talking about giving a picture, I just want us to add Psalm 91. Let's remember Psalm 91. Let's quickly look at that. Psalm 91 is our favorite Psalm that we have been reading. It's actually 
a psalm for the year. Psalm 91, let's look at verse 1. What does it say? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, dwelling in Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, we know it. It says, if anyone be in Christ, if any man, if any woman, if any boy, if any girl, if anyone be in Christ, being in Christ and Christ being in you, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away. The whole all things have become new. Lastly, let's look at Exodus chapter 34, 28 to 20, 35. Just to create the picture, now that we know it is about the relationship, which is what we're going to dig deeper in Exodus 34, 28 to 35. So he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now it was so. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come near him. Anyone. Then Moses called to them and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. 32, afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. 33, and when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out, and he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded, terrify the last word. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Of course, you know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7, that Christ has removed that veil. But the principle, as I've told us, that the principle applies. So Moses abided in the presence of God. And what happened? God rubbed off on Moses. Jesus will rub off on you. The fullness of Christ will rub off on us as we get deeper in the relationship that we abide in Christ. So the relationship, what are they? There is the relationship level of sonship, daughterhood daughtership, as you may call it. There is a relationship of, of, of friends, friends. Abraham was called a friend of God. And you've seen what Jesus described here as what friends. So, so much so that God said, can I do anything without telling my friend Abraham? Wow, you want to know the secret things of God. Think about that, being a friend of Jesus. Then, there is the level of the wife of Jesus, the spouse of Jesus, the wife of Jesus. And you know who the wives of Jesus are, those that are prepared for the marriage supper. Glory be to God. And then you have the level of brothers and sisters of Jesus and the level of servants. Let's just hold it at those levels and begin to look at yourself. Where are you? Where are you? And that's what we're going to be looking deeper. The Almighty God bless us. Our time is fast spent and we're going to pray. So with that, it means we're going to look at the relationship, the degree. Here the question that will be, what are the different degrees or level of abiding in Christ? And what do they mean? You know, what do they mean? So we will, when we come to then talk about how, we will then understand that it's not just at the level of, yes, study his word. Yes, you know, his word has to abide in you. 
But the word that abides in the heart of a wife is different from the word that abides in the heart of a child. Are you there with me? Are you following us? This is what makes the difference. You've got to come to know the relationship and aspire to get into that level, deepest relationship in Christ. That's what abiding in Christ is about. So a focus will be, what are the different degrees or level of abiding in Christ? As well as looking at all the other verses of the scripture in John chapter 15 that we haven't talked about yet. We will come to that. Uh, key point to make is that if you're not in Christ, you are not a branch. If you're not in Christ, you are not a branch. You see? You have to come to Christ before we even talk about the degree of relationship. And so wherever you're connecting from, or you are here and you're still taking this life as uh, meat and drink, that's what is more important to you than settling all your matters and let the burden bearer take your burden and make you a fruit, uh, a sister used Somebody used that phrase and it was so lovely. Fruit bearers, fruit bearers, yes. And you become fruit bearers. Okay, it was a translation. I believe, uh, yeah, that sister blessing used. It was lovely. Fruit bearers. Let the burden bearer take your burden of sin and whatever it may be and transform you into fruit bearers will lead the fullness of Christ. So let us join our faith together and pray right now. Wherever you're joining from, surrender your life to Jesus. He, he, he is divine. He is divine. You could see the source of uh, the, the ministry that powers Surefire Life Conference. The vine people assembly. That's where it came from, or that's where it comes from. The vine. Jesus is the vine. And we must get into that deep relationship with him. So let us pray. Confess him as Lord. Tell him, Lord Jesus, you are the vine. You are the source of all that I need in life. You are my savior. Heavenly Father, I come to you and I ask forgive me my sins through the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. Wash me, Lord God Almighty, with the precious blood of Jesus and take away all my sins. Now give me your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, change my heart. Take away rebellion from me. Transform my life and teach me the way of God. Heavenly Father, I surrender my life to you. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. You are my Lord. From now, I will serve you. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, people of God, open your mouth and let us all now talk to God. Tell him, Father God, thank you for teaching us. Thank you for calling us into this deep relationship with you. Lord, help me. Help me by your spirit to relate with you as my father, for you are my father. Lord Jesus, help me to relate with you. Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, help me. Help me. Thank you. I come into the fullness of the relationship that is available in God, that is available in Christ for humankind. I come into that full relationship. By your spirit, help me. By your spirit, help us, oh God Almighty. I hold nothing back. I give you all. I surrender all to you. Take all my life. Take all that I am. And make me, oh God, exactly what you created me to be. Help me by your spirit to achieve all you have proposed for me to achieve. The scripture says, 
all that Jesus Christ began to do and to teach. Lord, help me. Help us to do and to teach all that you have created us, called us, chosen us to do and to teach. And let all glory be to you, our Father in heaven. All glory be to you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters, for connecting. We will continue the teaching uh, next Sunday, 11 a.m. And please remember, Wednesday, we will connect to pray. This is the season of mercy for those who joined when we started. And we will continue our prayer of mercy on Wednesday, 6 p.m. The Almighty God bless you. Have a very fruitful week. And bye for now. Thank you.